All right, so welcome back to this uh, second uh, block after lunch. Uh, we will be having uh, a few interesting uh, sessions uh, with uh, insightful speakers from around the world. And uh, to start, uh, I would like to start with uh, Mr. Vladimir uh, Rakic, Software Development Director at Ibis Solutions. Today, he has a session entitled Uses, Usage of Advanced AI and Machine Learning Algorithms in Ibis Software Products for Decision-Making Purposes. The session is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you for the great introduction. Hi, everyone. It's great to see that uh, all the seats are full, or pretty much will be. So um, basically, today's uh, presentation will be uh, a little bit more technical than what you could see uh, today. So we will go a little bit more deep dive into some concrete examples that uh, I have prepared. Uh, a little bit about uh, my company. So EB Solutions is uh, there are not so many companies here that can say they are over 25 years uh, present on the market. Ibis is. Um, we are basically recognized uh, mainly as uh, IBM's platinum partner uh, as for the system integration business. But today uh, I will talk uh, about our own software development. Uh, where we have uh, products which are deployed uh, at pretty much every telco operator here uh, in the region, also for uh, within uh, financial sector and public sector and enterprises. Luckily for us, for all of these sectors, uh, we uh, have um, the today's topic as relevant. So all these uh, nice new algorithms have found their way into uh, into EBIS uh, products. So. Um, let me start by uh, saying that uh, uh, what I believe is the key criteria for any decision uh, making um, to have good quality of inputs, right? So you really need to have um, good data in order to be able to make good decisions. And not just good uh, quality data, you need to have pretty much all relevant data that you need for, uh, for that decision. Uh, where we see the modern uh, algorithms in um, uh, how they play a role. Basically, they can really boost the precision and the quality of data analytics. Uh, and th they do this uh, towards entirely new, new, new levels. We have many implementations. Um, and I will show uh, some of them. I will mention some of them today. Uh, how we basically... Uh, incorporate these, these uh, algorithms uh, in the three mentioned sectors uh, into, into our products. What products are we mainly talking about? So we have uh, performance monitoring uh, tools which are deployed at, at several telco operators. This is our own developed product, TBS Performance Insights, uh, in operation since uh, 2014. Uh, and uh, still used uh, within, uh, within uh, operators with nice new features. We have Data Lake as a central repository for storing the uh, data sources that we need to analyze. And we're on top of that, we uh, enable the um, data analytics solutions. So these solutions aim to analyze the data that are stored within, within the Data Lake. Uh, it's the same uh, in financial sector as well, so it's not just uh, um, um, relevant for the for the telco industry. Although you can mostly see the, those uh, uh, examples of, of projects here. Last but not least, IoT, Internet of Things, is uh, another, um, let's say, a vertical where we see a lot of uh, momentum and uh, where we uh, are also introducing new. Uh, software uh, products in terms of uh, IoT platforms that communicate with different devices. Of course, when data from devices is collected and stored centrally, uh, you can uh, perform such analysis and you can implement the algorithms on top. Um, where does all this fit? I said it's going to be a bit more technical, so um, apologies for that. Um, you have here, of course, um, data from different systems, from IT, from financial sector, from, from BI, etc. You can, you need to integrate this data and store the data within the data lake. 
And then you can do the uh, different kind of data analytics and implement different uh, software products on top. Of course, you need data from external platforms and uh, you can uh, even ingest or export some of this uh, into the public cloud. But doesn't change the fact that you need, uh, of course, all the data uh, available for uh, uh, algorithms to be uh, running uh, on top of that. What kind of algorithms are we talking about? So we mainly can divide them in, in two uh, groups. So I hope there are some data scientists here with us today. So it's mainly about supervised learning and forecasting and, and time series analysis. Where do we use these algorithms? Um, you have definitely heard about, as if you're a data scientist, about uh, XGBoost, about um, random forest, etc. Well, these uh, algorithms have found their way into uh, different products. One of them I will focus particularly on today is called Smart Capex, and this is our solution for optimal placement of investments within uh, the telco operator um, um, ecosystem. We have uh, also for uh, churn prevention, and this is something that is relevant for both uh, fintech and, and telco industry, uh, we have, uh, of course, um, the so-called churn metrics. So we want to analyze the behavior and want to, to predict trends and uh, make a decision what to do in order to prevent the customers from leaving your, uh, your company. Um, we have uh, products in the, in the uh, let's say, uh, for uh, assessment of uh, real estate, um, uh, market values where we need to predict uh, pricing trends and of course it's uh, something that uh, has um, maybe little to do with seasonality a lot to do with uh, uh, with uh, let's say some uh, unforeseen scenarios so this is maybe the most challenging part but it is doable and of course for forecasting you can uh, forecast pretty much any uh, time series uh, data that you have uh, stored and uh, key is to, of course, be able to monitor the data in a longer period of time. So you need to have certain time window before you can start making good quality forecasts and, and predictions. Uh, as promised, I, will, I, I really would like to explain this in a, in a plastic way as much as possible. So I decided to uh, go a deep dive into one of the products that we are right now implementing. It's the so-called uh, IBIS Smart CapEx, and uh, as mentioned, it uh, should help an operator to optimally plan uh, investments into the capacity expansions of their LT and, and 5G networks. Uh, what, what was the idea and how... how um, I have to say also from the, from the business side um, and from my experience, it is not easy to implement such a, a solution within a, a telco operator uh, ecosystem. Why? Because there are different stakeholders. There are uh, people, technical people, good engineers focusing on the technical uh, part. So, for example, uh, uh, the OSS KPIs, the, the, the performance monitoring data that is retrieved from the network that describe the quality of network performance. They are very um, used to analyze such kind of data, but they need also to understand that other data sources, like when data is collected from the CRM, like, uh, from the, um, let's say, uh, marketing even department, so what are the forecasts, what are the targets for uh, customer um, acquisition and, and market share in future, uh, what is the offering that we would like to um, uh, to um, offer the, to the users in terms of uh, improved uh, tariffs, uh, better throughputs. This is something that is a little bit ahead of time, and this is where we come to forecasting. So we need to be able to use additional data sources in order to claim that our network, telco network, will be uh, capable of um, supporting better uh, user throughputs, better user uh, experience in future. And for that, we need to be able to analyze uh, data from different sources or, let's say, pretty much all of the big systems uh, deployed uh, within telco 
uh, operators. So we are definitely talking about different software tools, different network vendors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and one thing that makes uh, all of this easier for us is, for the first time, we have uh, a nice bridge between the technical department and the financial sector. So it's easy to offer something, but can you deliver that? Can, what kind of investment do you need to make in your network so that you can really live up to the claims that you are promising towards, towards your customers? And now we found a way how to do it um, with, with, the, with the Smart Capex uh, product. And I will go to, to uh, in a little bit more details uh, for, for the data sources, just because I would like you to understand, um, first of all, that if we really want to implement the algorithms uh, on top of all this data, we need to ingest them. So typically, it ends up in a, in a data lake. We have uh, the network topology data collected from software tools uh, used for network planning. There are many of them, they are well known, um, and there is certain static data stored there which is changed from time to time. We have the very dynamic OSS uh, data, which is retrieved every minute from different network topology. Um, and we have, of course, uh, the configuration data. So we need to understand what is the um, actual configuration and what could be the maximum configuration per each of the, of the uh, network uh, parts or, let's say, uh, base stations or cells. Last but not least, marketing inputs, as I mentioned. Uh, what are the products? How, what is the cost per product? So we have several vendors. We have Nokia's, we have Ericsson's, we have uh, other, uh, dif different vendors. We need to understand what is the price and what is the configuration per each of them. And last but not least, uh, we can use uh, crowdsourcing data. Uh, it can be an external, it's actually it's the only external data source which is not already available within the telco um, um, environment of, of a typical operator. What uh, we can see here on the slide is uh, the end result. So when we use all these data sources and implement our algorithms on top, we can estimate for a predefined budget what is the best way to, uh, wh where should you invest um, in your network, in which parts and how much uh, per each of the uh, uh, of, of, the, of the base stations. Uh, we can measure what is the gain and how can we measure the gain because we need to forecast the throughput. So we need to understand what, is, uh, what will be achieved when we uh, basically invest in additional hardware uh, per, uh, per base station. So, of course, it can be vice versa. You can also say, this is the level of service I want to uh, achieve, and then the tool will compute and let you know what is the uh, amount of investment you need to make in order for, uh, the quality, for that particular uh, quality of service to be, to be reached. Okay, so in order for it not to stay uh, just like a normal presentation, there is a video here that you can actually, I want you to see how this looks like. So you can actually, uh, for both LT and 5G, you can uh, select different products. Uh, when I say products, I mean uh, different um, types of uh, hardware, which is deployed uh, for every uh, transponder, for every uh, basically uh, base station, uh, separately per technology. Uh, there is a predefined, of course, you need all the uh, information about the uh, vendors and detailed uh, data uh, for uh, each of the uh, hardware parts that are supported by, by that vendor. When you have all this information, you can actually configure this. We want to make, um, to make it interactive for the user, so the user can actually 
put the weighting factor, different weighting factor, whether uh, uh, the whether the more focus and more weight is put to the uh, throughput or to the cost of the solution. So how will the algorithm uh, basically function? And not only the technical part, we want to understand, uh, we want to quantify and give the user the possibility to fine-tune some of the parameters related to average revenue per user, market share. It's all very different for every operator. So we have big telcos, we have small telcos, and they all have, of course, not just different amount of users, but different vendors in their ecosystem, etc. What you're seeing here is the final product, uh, which resides on top of the data lake. We need to collect all this data. We need to be able to uh, analyze all this uh, data. And we need to implement, of course, algorithms aiming to have an accurate forecast for uh, the uh, throughput. And now I will go uh, in more detail uh, regarding the forecast and the, the algorithms themselves. What you see here is an example. It's not, uh, it, it's a three sector uh, base station it, in one of the cities uh, in Serbia. And uh, for each of these sectors, of course, we have data uh, as a time series. The blue uh, line represents the data that is already collected, and the red one is uh, basically uh, illustrating the uh, forecast. And this is done per sector. So there is different, uh, basically, output for each of the three sectors because they cover uh, different areas. Uh, now, when it comes to the forecasting, uh, it's... Now we're back to this, to this station. So we are actually forecasting the traffic, the number of users, and we're taking into account, of course, uh, frequency band and the, uh, the bandwidth. Uh, but all of this makes less sense uh, without including the uh, surrounding topology. So we actually need to be able to understand uh, the neighbor KPI, so the performance indicators from uh, neighboring uh, sites and, and cells. And some of you who are from uh, the telco environment should be um, familiar with these um, KPIs. It's a more mostly about the spectral efficiency uh, w per uh, per frequency band. So, what is the amount of uh, um, free resource blocks and what is the channel, channel quality indicator uh, per cell in the surrounding area? Why? Because it does have an impact on the results of the uh, of the actual. Uh, forecasted cells. So we need to understand uh, not just the, the, the cell data, we need to understand the overall uh, environment where the uh, neighbor, neighbor cells are and where the users are within uh, this area. Uh, the output of this will determine the uh, maximum end user throughput that can be reached when certain capacity upgrade is uh, made. What uh, it's not also easy for us to explain to the users uh, what is the return of investment for this product. If they implement all these nice algorithms, what is, how can they quantify um, the gain or cost savings in this case? Uh, you saw on previous uh, video and slides that we have a, a, a slider where we can actually uh, quantify the amount of investments and the, the software solution will tell uh, where the investment should be placed. But customer needs to trust this. So how can we, how can we, we, we need to be uh, able to explain to customers the value of uh, these uh, algorithms and uh, trustworthiness of uh, our forecasting. So in order to do that, uh, I have to say that, uh, first of all, it's, it's never easy. But sometimes we we are very uh, we are using uh, very uh, plastic uh, examples. Uh, man can do and an engineer can do a calculation, very precise calculation, resulting in uh, when when, when uh, the OSS KPIs are collected. So, for example, uh, there are engineers who can understand the data and they can uh, create a list of let's say most. Uh, congested areas where investments need to be placed first. That can be done. I've done that myself in the past. But 
uh, what a person or engineer or team of engineers cannot do is to then efficiently say, okay, what for the next three years I need to be able to plan certain uh, traffic, I need to have a good forecast, and I maybe don't want to invest, I don't need to invest in the maximum configuration, I just want to invest in, uh, I want to save some of the capex and invest into the optimal configuration. Or if I'm uh, expanding uh, the uh, surrounding neighboring areas, so if I want to uh, invest in two of the sites, maybe I don't need to invest in the third one, or maybe I don't need to invest in, in maximum configuration. This is not something that is uh, physically doable by a team of engineers, and that's where the uh, these forecasting uh, uh, algorithms uh, do play uh, a significant role. Also, we can, of course, uh, first of all, we need to identify which uh, uh, cells need to be uh, expanded uh, with additional configuration, and there are priorities that uh, the uh, uh, that the software solution is basically calculating uh, by understanding the forecasted traffic. So we need to, uh, based on the traffic and the amount of traffic in the uh, defined period, uh, we can define severity and priority for uh, expansion. Uh, that being said, it can happen that in certain area, it is not possible to uh, basically find uh, to, to, to execute the upgrade. Why? Because all the frequencies are already used, the maximum configurations have been already deployed at uh, this area, and this means that the algorithm will tell to engineer something very important. This is where you need to start looking for the new site. Now, this is what they need to do, what they do anyway, and what they do very well. But for a solution to tell them that within the next one or two years, they need to, and this is not a real example, it's just something I tried to illustrate uh, um, um, f to be, to be uh, understandable. So, of course, uh, uh, a site is missing there. There are, there are many sites uh, deployed at, at uh, uh, Jagodina City, but uh, just for, for your understanding, the algorithm will provide uh, the so-called search ring proposal. It will say, this is something that you cannot expand further, these two sites. You need to build a new one. And of course, then you need to place certain uh, configuration for, for that site, which is also result of, of uh, the uh, algorithms used. Uh, eventually, what we want to achieve with this, and Smart CapEx is, is pretty much becoming a buzzword now in the telco industry. It's not something that we invented. We deployed algorithms and we deployed them successfully, but smart capex is known. So it's measured. How, how, we, how can we measure the uh, effectiveness of this? It's measured based on the uh, so-called hits and misses. So after a certain period of time, time will tell whether the algorithm has missed certain site in a way that it was not proposed for capacity extension, and it should have been, because there's obviously a capacity issue in that area. So this is the amount of misses, and hits are all the sites where the expansion was really necessary. So it is relatively easy after a certain period of time, uh, we're talking about uh, one plus years, to uh, basically determine the value um, of the implemented solution. But it is not easy to explain this uh, in advance and to prove in advance that uh, it will work. But when you basically, um, when, you, when you go uh, down to the simple, to all the inputs and the tasks that need to be executed by a human being, and you can basically prove that not all of these factors can be uh, analyzed by uh, a team of engineers, then it is very straightforward that the added value is there. Um, and the efficiency, the actual efficiency, will, of course, uh, uh, depend on the algorithm used within the, within the Smart CapEx solution. What we can uh, claim, and we, are, we have already started with commercial implementation of, of uh, this uh, solution, is that we have achieved uh, additional 25% of accuracy compared to um, uh, 
to uh, the uh, solutions which we found uh, available on the market that are not taking into account uh, the uh, surrounding, uh, surrounding cells. And this is something I already uh, mentioned before. Uh, last but not least, what is the value of this for decision making? Um, we, by using the algorithms and by providing the algorithms within the uh, software solution that is directly used by engineering team, uh, replacing all the conventional calculations they have, they have uh, performed in the past, then it is possible to really estimate the volume of investment, the optimal investment to support company goals, not the technical KPIs, but the goals overall, like market share, everything we, we mentioned already, sales targets. We can create an optimal investment plan based on the predefined budget, reduce the return of investment time because we are not over-investing, we are uh, placing the investments where they are needed and when they are needed, and uh, of course, uh, users can make their own iterations so they can play along pl play with different parameter settings um, depending on the on the network operator strategy depending on network uh, topology be depending on the uh, market share the the amount of uh, subscribers the operators themselves can set certain thresholds differently because they know what is the impact, what is the average revenue per user in their uh, network, what is the churn rate in their network, what is, the, um, um, what, what is basically the uh, strategy for the, for the coming years. And then with this, they can even uh, play with, with, with the parameters to uh, understand different investment scenarios. Uh, and benchmark investment scenarios against each other. Uh, I would like to, because I have, I have just three more minutes, I'd like to leave some time for questions, but um, I hope this was not too technical. Um, my goal was to uh, try and show you one, how one, uh, exam how, how one uh, implementation looks like and where do these algorithms fit within a, a final solution or software product uh, that you could see on the screen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can you open, please? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vladimir uh, Rakic. Um, do you maybe have uh, one question? We could take one. If there is any question that is technical or non-technical, here we go. Thank you very much for the presentation. I have just one question regarding the metric that you use. You mentioned uh, max and end user throughput. Do you think maybe that this is actually optimistic case that, that you consider using this metric as a, let's say, determination determination point? Because, like, you know, throughput is varying a lot in the cell, so if you use a max one, that can give you probably optimistic hits. Very good question. Uh, the idea of using maximum uh, user throughput is to be able to understand what is the achievable throughput for the n plus one user in the, that is coming in the cell? So we want to understand, we want to predict what is the possible achievable throughput for the newcomer in that cell. And based on that, of course, there are sub KPIs. There are CQI, MCS, whatever is uh, uh, the, the throughput consists of. That, that goes without saying. But the uh, full buffer throughput is something that we uh, that we want to uh, forecast and estimate. And it's also relevant to one of the inputs. You saw, for example, UCLA as a crowdsourcing um, metric that can be used. That is also full buffer throughput. Uh, so this, this is a nice enrichment. It's the only external data source and an optional one, but it also has the same technical relevancy as the forecasted metrics. Thank you for that question.